nice touch. Hey guys, Senor Froman back with another edition of Surf Fishing with Lures. I'm a co-founder of Surfcasters Journal Magazine and the author of our Surfcasting. As you know, um, we do this continuing series to share with you, to educate you, to amuse you, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I got paper towels today for a special reason here laid out, so I'll explain this in a, in a few minutes. But I was thinking about a work today, I, I said to myself, all right, so if I was going to target big fish with plugs or lures, what would be my best choice, right? So now I know a lot of these lures have caught a lot of big fish, okay? And I know that, for example, Super Strike Needlefish, I know that Rinaldi took a 64, and I know a shitload of big stuff was caught on daughters, and, and Gary Soldati's GRS, a lot of big fish are by him i've seen the damn pictures uh beach master cowboys pikeys yes i don't 40s in the old days uh i mean this is campus uh, uh three ounce uh gibbs baldata if this thing can, can talk uh habs needlefish i mean are you kidding me you remember what happened you know 10 15 years ago when they were hammering all the big fish on needlefish um bottle plugs Bucktails, I mean, has it really, is there really a more big fish killer than a bucktail? Maybe a giant pencil popper in the middle of Cape Cod Canal. You see where I'm going with this? All these laws do catch some fish, a big fish at the times, especially when presented to them. And for the most part, they're mostly bigger plugs, except for the bucktail, which doesn't seem to be a matter of size, which I'll get to in a, in a second. But the thing is, as much as I want to think who is my number one guy that catches all his big fish on on lures and it's consistently consistently um productive and i i can't i can't i can't think of a single guy i i i know it's embarrassing but i, I can't i mean i i know guys that catch fish on bait and then take pictures with lures uh but that that's not my guy um i know a guys that they're not shy about telling you that they caught it on rigged eels and eels. Uh, Bill Wetzel fishes eels a lot, and whatever big fish he takes, you, you know, a lot of times are on eels. Uh, John Skinner, uh, he's not shy about using rigged eels. You see his videos in the inlets in the, on the North Shore, he uses rigged eels a lot. A lot of his bigger fish came on that. Ask him. I mean, he's not, honestly, I don't know. Any, now, has there, are there guys that catch big fish consistently? Um, that have caught big fish over the years on plugs? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can name you a dozen. Are there guys that catch it all the time? No, they just don't. You know who catches, you know who are the only guys that are catching big fish on, uh, with consistency? What are they using? And you know the answer to this. Eels. Eels and bait. In my opinion, and I know you don't want to hear this, but I'm, this is my opinion. The only way to consistently catch big fish is by using either eels, live or rigged, or bait, bunker or whatever, herring, mackerel, whatever your bait of choice is. That's just been my experience over the years, okay? I'm not telling you um, nothing that you probably don't know. And you know what? Um, you're probably used to it, you know, if, if you're fishing next to a guy with bait, that he outfishes you as far as the size and you outfish him as far as the quantity. Uh, it's always been the case. Having said that, there's al always uh, a way of, of maybe if you're a plug purist, looking at the best way to utilize what you have in your bag when you're going after the big fish. And I think in some ways that is more of a fair approach instead of you trying to say, I'm going to show it to everyone that I'm the greatest fisher in the world and I'm just going to throw plugs all the time that I'll burn them blue in the face and i'm going to tell you a story that's going to make you laugh okay and my my buddy knows this story he was with me and, and it sucks to be him but he was one of those stubborn as a mule guy he still is and we were on the rock and cutty hunt this was years ago um not that long ago but a few years ago 
we were on a rock and cutty hunk and uh guys before us the few nights before us took some fish in the high 40s bunch of big fish on eels uh we got we swam to the rock we got on the rock at sunset we had oh my god we had bass all over our feet we had fish everywhere but they wouldn't take anything and they weren't that big they were you know up to a teen sized fish on, on a small fry look like a fry ma uh Fry mackerel, maybe somebody said. I, I'm not sure what. A fry herring? Well, I don't know what the fuck that was. Anyway, we spent two hours casting pencil poppers, metal lips, sluggles, and everything. Nothing, nothing, nothing. I mean, nothing. And then it got dark. And now at this point, we can't see the bait around us, which, okay, I mean, that's normal, right? It gets dark, you can't see the bait. So we're standing on a rock. We're about, uh, well, I can't touch them. So about 15 feet of water where the rock is where we swim to. So we're on a rock. I'm throwing rig deals. He's throwing plugs. Now he was admin, and this was this was his this was his choice going into the spring. He said, Zeno, I'm, I want to do a big fish, which he did. He did a fish that was over 50 pounds on a daughter later in the year, which uh, he didn't have a scale on. It looked like a 50 pound fish. Obviously, you can never tell what it looks like, but this guy's been fishing as long as I've been born. So. He said, I'm going to do a big fish on plugs. I'm not using bait. I, not, I mean, eels or anything else. He doesn't use bait anyway, but eels, he does use eels. Uh, rig deals and regular eels. So, all right, no problem. So we're fishing on the same rock. Rock's like this table. It's a big rock. And uh, I'm on the right-hand side. He's on the left-hand side. And I'm throwing the rig deal so I can kind of pitch it around. It gives me a little bit more of a, of a room to work since I'm a righty. And then he's casting over me with... Whatever plug he's got, he's got giant pikeys, he's got big sluggles, he's got these things that Hoagie made for us, we call the horse cock uh, rubber. The thing was about that big, it was about that uh, thick. Uh, Mike from Hoagie made a prototype and just gave it to us to fish with, well we were cutting him just to screw around with. So we put some owner hooks on and we were just throwing that too. And uh, so now, after we haven't caught any fish, half an hour passed by, you know how this is, it gets like really quiet. It gets dark. Cutty hunk, there's no ambient light, so it gets really dark. And there's nothing going on, and we're not getting any hits. So now what? Now there was a shitload of fish here an hour ago, now there's no fish at all. So I look at him, he looks at me, and you know one of those things when you're looking at buddy, who's going to make the first move to leave? So I said, ah, give it half an hour, if nothing happens, we'll just go on to another spot. Because, like I said, the guys before us at sunset had some great fish on eels. But we were throwing poppers and metal because there was a lot of small fish around we're trying to catch a fish not you know those fish anything anything finally after about an hour i get a fish maybe 18 19 pounds it wasn't that great of a fish anyway i'm going to make the story short in the next hour or two three i don't know how long we stayed on that rock we stayed most of the tide i took six or eight fish they were all over 30 pounds okay i don't know the size i didn't weigh them uh, we had some nice pictures out of it. I think this is one of the pictures from that night. Um, and Ray did not get a bump. I think he might have got a swipe at the giant uh, jointed pikeys, like a creek chub. But I don't think he, he had a touch. So I had six fish over 30 and a bunch of fish that I dropped that bent my rod to an insane shape. And this was a GSB I fished that with Lamy Glass GSB. I remember that. So the next night, uh, Ray, out of desperation, I left the next night. I had to go home. The other crew came in. Ray stayed with Tommy, got on a rock, borrowed Neil out of desperation, made a first cast, hanged this fish that he couldn't turn. The rod was almost bent to the point it was going to break, and it came a button. My point is, that's it. That's, in, in, that's the gist of it. The rig deals and live eels work even when no plugs work, for whatever reason. So if you're not getting fish on plugs, don't think that you're not going to get a big fish on rig deals. For whatever reason, if I'm throwing a rig deal in the water, I'm thinking to myself, there's a big fish in here. And if there is one, they usually will eat it. With my luck, the bluefish will usually chop the tail. That's how my luck usually works. But, hey, listen, that's, that's just my, my thing. So, how would I target big fish with lures? I haven't said that. All right, well, I think... You need to look at it two ways, okay? And, and this is just my opinion, what I've observed over the years, okay? One thing is conditions and one thing is bait fish, okay? If you have a predominant, um, you have a surf with a lot of big bait fish, you really want to go with a big plug. You, you know, if you've got flat conditions or moderate and a lot of bunker, a lot of herring, 
uh, stuff like that. You want to go with an Adam 40. You want to go with a big Pikey. You want to go with a big Pencil Papa, big Danny. You want a load of. Sh you may want to make a shitload of noise, okay? And this is primarily in the daytime because uh, we can observe a lot of bait fish being around. Um, when you're dealing with rough conditions, big bottle plugs, um, uh, bucktails. I mean, I've seen, you know, this is the thing. You go under the nor'easter, under the lighthouse on the second or third day, and the water's up where you got to fish off the top, and, you know, you're throwing a two-ounce bucktails, three-ounce bucktails, which is not bigger than this, just the head is bigger than this, and the guys will catch you 40 or 50-pound bass at times when they're good. It's not a matter of big bait. It's just a matter of being able to present something when you know that the big fish are there. So that, to some extent, is I'm trying to paint you a picture that it's not the plug. It is you. It is you knowing what to throw to those fish. It's not the plug. More fish, big fish, in my opinion, are landed inside the inlets on a bucktail than any other um, lure. Having said that, most of the guys that do that, I'm not going to go out and shout it. I really did not. I met a lot of them over the years, and they don't talk about it. They just do what they do. They, they go with, you know, name the inlet, Fire Island, Joneses, Mauritius, whatever the inlet, the breachway. Hey, Steve McKenna took a lot of fish and eels in, uh, in uh, breachways over there, and then he, you know, gravitated to sluggos, but he still does a lot of fish on, on, on eels. Um, stuff like this, and this is something that I just took out. This is 10 years old, okay? You're going to laugh. This is a, a giant... Uh, Beachmaster cowboy with a skin of a, I'm gonna guess of like a five pound 30 inch shield that was about that big but you just use the last few inches of of skin to put it on and I mean this looks beautiful in the water uh, this is a big target that generally produces oversized fish okay and it can be modified to swim swim in a different uh, uh, water column this is actually the the eyes bent up, so I was swinging it down. And this is the actual plug that goes on it. So it's a fairly big plug when you compare that to the, uh, to the uh, daughter, let's just say. To me, the daughter is a great plug to catch a big fish, but it's an accidental catcher. It's not something that I would go target the big fish with. Now, if I knew there was a bunker in the area, or like weak fish was in the area, you know, and they were coming on and peconic, or along the beach, yeah, Dada would be the first thing that I, I would definitely throw. So my point is it's you. It's not necessarily the plug. There's no super secret plug. Other than this, there's no super secret plug that produces a lot of fish. To me, if, you, if, if, if the fish are feeding on bunker and they're up on the top, and like the Jersey guys will tell you the story with the pencil poppers that can cast a mile and make a ruckus and take in oversized fish, yeah. I mean, let them go now. I dare anyone to go now and catch those fish off the jetties. Well, they're not there because the bunker's not there and we decimate the striper population too. You know, speaking of big fish, I mean, please, I'm not against you taking a fish out home for dinner. I really am not. I am against the commercial fishing for striped bass. I always have been. But, I mean, if you're going to catch and you catch a 30-pound fish to today, it's your biggest fish, and that's awesome. Take it home, take pictures, put it on Instagram, do whatever. But if you catch 31 tomorrow, don't take it home if you don't want to. You know, like, uh, we're killing way too many fish just to show off. Take whatever it's legal to, to feed your family. I'm not against that. I actually encourage that. That's what kind of keeps you into the sport to some extent. My point is be respectful to a fish. You know, release it properly. Take care I mean, I'll make a video, hopefully, uh, on release in, in the surf where I can show you what to do. But, you know, just, it's a simple, these are, these are common things, you know. Don't step on a fish. Don't stick your hand in a gills. You know, uh, even bluefish, don't step on a bluefish. I mean, if you don't know how to uh, unhook the fish, just stop fishing. Go, go, go do something else. I mean, I don't know. There is no such thing as trash fish. You, you'll see, years from now, we'll be fishing for sand deals. I mean, sand deals and sea robins if we keep this up. Well, my point is, you know, it doesn't take a long, you know, much to, to be a little respectful, to unhook the fish, to when you hook in a fish on every cast, to switch to a single hook so you don't have to do damage to the fish or to yourself, you know, and, and you can catch more fish with using a bucktail. So that's just, you know, my little pet peeve, you know, and, you know, the fishery is in a bad shape to begin with. Let's just try some, some respect to these fish that gives us such joy. Again, I'm Zeno Hroman from Surfcasters Journal. If you like what we do, please subscribe to our channel. Um, visit our publication at surfcastersjournal.com. 
uh, be a good steward to our resource, uh, help others, and hopefully I'll see you guys on the beach. <laughs>